you know, faith communities working together at these gardens that they're in their churchyards or places of worship and, you know, sharing resources. And after Mass, maybe at the Catholic Church, everyone goes out and weeds for an hour together. Getting a community garden up and going, identifying invasive species and native species. We consider this uh, being keepers of the earth, keepers of the garden, if you please. The Energy Audits is a great program and energy efficiency is a great cause. What really attracted me was the idea of community gardens um, to get the various churches throughout the UP to implement community gardens. How God is a part of our environment. How do we care for that? What can we do to be better stewards of God's creation? Community garden because we just see a need for it. We need to be mindful that our communities are our places to dwell and we have to keep them healthy for ourselves, for our kids and grandkids. With this project, I see a huge opportunity. Our congregational gardens or faith gardens become the pollinator gardens for everybody else's garden. That the church is being seen or the synagogue is being seen as the servant of all the community gardens because we have the real pollinators. They provide us with an essential ecosystem service, pollinators. We can't do without them. We care for the pollinators. A part of our garden is set aside for the pollinators. An avid gardener, I have noticed the absence of certain pollinators. The families will be able to use the, uh, the produce that they grow on their plot, and the balance will belong to the church, but that produce will go into our food pantry or the one at Faith and Rock. Information about the local food pantries and how to grow food for a food pantry. You know, faith communities working together at these gardens that they're in their churchyards or places of worship and, you know, sharing resources and after Mass, maybe at the Catholic Church, everyone goes out and weeds for an hour together. And just that building of community and that bringing people together and honoring, um, honoring our earth in this way just has so many different components um, on a spiritual and practical level as well as the ecological benefits um, that it has and education about native plants about growing local food so it's just really rich I had written a little article in the mining journal four years ago after the close of, of our tree planting project I talked about this vision and the last sentence was you know so I'm gonna plant this seed about the garden and have a little faith to see if it will grow and so sometimes it takes seeds a long time to grow but Four years later, here we are. Um, we were able to get this um, grant from the EPA, so um, we're really excited. I wanted to read just a little piece from Peg Streep, Gardening as a Spiritual Tool. It's a great little article that, that she wrote, which I can email to anyone who's interested, but I'll just read this last paragraph. With all of our senses engaged, seeing becomes understanding in the garden. Just as the medieval monks could see God's presence in his handiwork, and could make it the starting point for a meditation, so too we are learning to go into the garden to glimpse the larger pattern, regardless of what we name it, which seems to elude us in the other details of our everyday lives. Our lives are, are enriched when we understand that the seeds in our hands are the promise of tomorrow. In, 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 and like I said, the, the community garden people in Marquette are really willing to help us with some workshops that they're already doing and we can kind of partner, but I think what we really need to help on, what I really need help on in, in, is these outline areas in the UP, being able to set up, um, just because there might be already networks in place that I don't know about, and getting some workshops out there. Jan is willing to help with some workshops on pollinators, the importance of that, um, invasive species, seed saving, and um, and also cooperative weed management. We want to be able to, to form a network of sharing resources, being able to, to help congregations who want to start gardens. About a year and a half ago, I guess, is when I, we did a preliminary kind of um, feel to see if churches were, were interested, which churches may already have gardens and who might be interested in if we got, you know, if we had a grant to help them. 
and within like six days I had 30 churches that were interested. We're, yeah, we're just kind of trying to find creative ways to do this. Five workshops throughout the UP that, that would have kind of like a garden toolkit on how to, how to kind of get started with, with getting a community garden up and going information about the local food pantries and how to grow food for a food pantry, how to prepare it if, if the food pantry wants it, because I think there's different regulations for different places, which Alma, who was here last night from the Baha'i community, was going to look into. And then the importance of the pollinators in the garden and, and how we could add that if, if folks wanted to into their garden, how important that is, and also help <coughs> with identifying invasive species and native species. Our goal is to get um, the churches that want help going as soon as they can. So whether that's this year or whether they need another year, it's it's just to get it started and then and to and to provide tools that it can be sustaining, so that it's not something that just happens for a year and next year they don't know how to go forward. Because I think that's mm -hmm. where we a network of being able to share resources and keep that is important. If you talk about Earth Keepers too. You know, if you were to summarize, it's got two targets. We got two years, two targets. One is the 40 audits and energy workshops uh, within parishes, and the second is establishment of what we hope is 30 gardens. That's our target right now, and that would mean, uh, you know, immersing yourself in the garden world a little bit, working with Kira to support the parishes that already have gardens, to do, uh, be willing to maybe work with Jan and whatever to create some mini garden workshops sponsored by the faith community. Now remember, what we've already got going, and this is one of the secrets here that we've got, we've got the technical knowledge available, but we need the human capital and the strategic plan to make things happen. Kira told me that her research says to really get a garden up and going with some landscaping and things, the figure that she used was two to four thousand dollars. And you know, from La Flora and my experience at my campus ministry, is that's what about it costs to go. Uh, uh, apart from people but, that can uh, well, and that's but a lot know, of that can be in kind. In kind, you know, a lot. Of, that's I mean, like that's what about it takes. People who can drive the trucks or who have mm -hmm. to yeah. can bring the soil in and things like that. Do we have people who would be interested in working on some energy workshops uh, in terms of possibly representing this group and talking about the project? both the garden and energy, but primarily focus on the energy, and of course Kira will, and Doug will be right with you on that. I want you to hear again from our students what they've been doing, because they've been meeting every Friday morning since the news conference. And I want to hear, I want them to tell you what this experience has been for them, planning their own workshop for dorm gardens. So they're going to parallel us at the university, herb gardens and things. And when, when uh, Jan said to, said to us, you know, these church gardens need to have a poll they need to be pollinator gardens, like with butterflies and, and milkweed, and I thought, wow, now here's a connection for you, where our congregational gardens or faith gardens become the pollinator gardens for everybody else's garden, that the church is being seen, or the synagogue is being seen as the servant of all the community gardens because we have the real pollinators. We care for the pollinators. A part of our garden is set aside for the pollinators. We're serving the whole community. I mean, what a what an incredible vision that would be. And people would, you know, wow, there's the church again serving the community. There's the faith community serving. So this pollinator piece, and it's it's threatened. 